doing quick thoughts on David Hay versus Arnold Gijai. We all knew that was going to happen. We all knew it would be a quick, spectacular knockout for or, or for David Hay. We knew rightly that he'd pull this guy out in a few rounds. Now, everyone goes on about undefeated records. Now, I'll put an annotation to another video where I mention this. But as far as I'm concerned, as far as even just boxers themselves is concerned, an undefeated record isn't shit. An undefeated record isn't jack shit if you haven't faced quality opposition. Because you could fight 35 bombs, or 40 bombs, or 100 bombs. And be undefeated, but you could fight a hundred world champions in a three or four, five weight classes, and it make all the difference to your status as a boxer. So this was the case here. Arnold Jujai was twenty nine and 0, 21 knockouts. Nobody had heard much of the guy. Um, nobody could even pronounce his name. Uh, everyone knew David Hay would knock him out sooner or later. Sooner rather than later. Um, thoughts on the fight. The guy didn't have much punch resistance at all. Very weak legs. Very sort of... Very... Just very bad punch resistance. I mean, David Hay knocked him out with a jab, which I think says it all. David Hay said that he hit him. David say, David Hay said that the jab was a hard jab because he said that he could feel that the you know the pressure traveling through his arm, but it didn't look like. A very powerful job, but it knocked him down nonetheless, and then he ended up throwing a flurry in the second round to finish it off. But the guy's legs were buckling all over the place. The guy, I mean, fair play to the guy for trying to stick in defend himself, he tried as best he could but unfortunately it didn't help much um, but he didn't he didn't uh, he didn't do the Frank Bruno type thing you know when Frank Bruno was getting it tough and with a tough opponents the chin his chin would be exposed he'd be lying in the ropes he wouldn't move, he wouldn't hold on. Now, this was similar to Arnold Jujai, but he didn't have his chin in the air. He kept himself tucked up, but he should have stayed off the ropes. He definitely should have stayed off the ropes. He should have maybe held on or ran a wee bit, and he could have made it go a couple of rounds longer. But yeah, and... Thoughts on David Hay as a boxer and his comeback. Well, his punching power is still there for sure, if not even harder than it was beforehand. But he looks significantly slower. Um, his punches are more uh, roundhouse, I think. Uh, don't know whether many people would agree on that, but I think his punching technique is completely different to what it was. But he's slowed down considerably. His athleticism doesn't seem to be what it used to. I think he's maybe his hand and foot speed. Now you have to remember that 
he's only a couple of fights into this comeback so maybe the ring rust hasn't exactly came away yet but it th came in three pounds lighter um, I did notice he was a slightly more fluid as far as defense um, but his punching power was there, his hand speed seemed to slow down a little bit he didn't seem to be as energetic whether that was to do with the training camp or not because if you watch his interviews from a couple of days before when he's doing the public workout the guy just looks absolutely drained I mean he looks he looks like he's not even you know getting the right amount of rest which could be possible I mean boxing is a very physically demanding sport a lot of um, and I mean even if you're not a boxer if you're not a professional athlete but if you work out a lot and lift weights and so forth it can be, you can need a lot of sleep to recover and you can be very tired just because you're putting your body through stress and sometimes having the energy is quite gonna be quite tough and that's just a sport of boxing Anyways, give me your thoughts on this whole David Hay thing, and uh, thanks for watching.